Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to open up the Tron XY X2. That is their basically big version of a TiVo Michelangelo. It's a 220 by 220 by 220 largely assembled full size base cantilevered printer. So kind of like a, well, actually it's basically a, it looks like a TiVo Michelangelo but it's bigger. It's 220 cubed. So we're going to build that today. Stay tuned. So here we have the Tron XY X2. It is largely assembled. This is your entire X arm and carriage and vertical carriage assembly all built and ready to go. It actually does have a flexible compatible feeder unit on here as part of your extruder setup. Uh, everything's built, everything's plugged in. The one um, limit switch wire came loose. I had to plug that back in. Um, the bed's installed already. It's all done. You don't have to do anything. Um, this is a little wobbly. I got to figure out why that's wobbling. This screw appears to be stripped, so I got to figure that out. Thumb wheel, uh, wing nut on the back to tension the belt for the Y axis. It is a micro SD card, and I have already prepped a micro SD card with everything we need on it. And then inside here, you have your power cord, your print surface. Yes, I do. They. The spool holder, oh, I do remember the spool holder. I hate the spool holder. I'm going to replace that. Your vertical rail, your Z-axis rod, your pitiful sample filament, a random screw that was in the box. i got to figure out where that went. And here you have your typical blue 3D printer USB cable. You have your two screwdrivers. Here's your memory card and um, so it looks like a spare limit switch. Little tiny Allen keys. A top brace bracket with a bearing so we are going to use this top brace bracket and then we are going to pop this bearing out and not use this bearing because the bearing will make your prints worse which we do not want so I will pop that out and get rid of that bearing or I won't put it on a handle for the top bag of screws and no idea what that is. I guess they'll tell me at some point. And that's all that's in the box. So I'm going to now work on figuring out how to assemble this. So I had to take the printer apart before I can actually build it. First of all, this got destroyed in shipment. This was bent. I was able to bend it straight so I could probably use it until I replace it. The, the nut that goes through the bed for the leveling the bed. But here's your inside of your printer here. So this is your Y-axis stepper motor, and this is your Z-axis stepper motor there. They're actually inside this case, which is nice. I wish they had just made the case a little bit bigger to, um, to balance it out a little more, but it's fine. I'll bring you guys closer in a moment. Um, here is your power supply. It is 12 volts, 20 amps. Model S250-12. Whatever that means. Um, at least that's not too restricted. And it does have an exhaust fan. Good. So you have the power supply fan drawing the air out. You have intake air here. So the air will be drawn in here out the back. Good. Um, power supply looks fine. The reason I took it apart was the rail was loose. The Y-axis rail. And there's four Phillips screws here, 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 and here going through the rail into the box. And that loose bolt that I heard, nut, it was actually a nut inside. One of the nuts came off, so I had to put the nut. It's basically a bolt going through the rail into the box, and there's a nut on the inside. Um, in the future, I would weld blind nuts in there so they can't come loose. <laughs> um, but yeah, got those four tightened up, and now the bed doesn't wiggle anymore. So we are going to button this back up and continue with assembly. Printer is reassembled, and while I was here, I made sure to flip the switch to 100. 110 volts. Do not forget to do that, please. Next, we're going to install the vertical. There are two screw holes on the side here. Clean them up because there's going to be a lot of chaff from the threading process. They install here. Two M416s and two shims bolted into the side. Two M5s bolted from underneath. And that will attach your vertical gantry to the printer. Okay. Next, we're going to install the carriage assembly, the vertical carriage assembly, it just slides into place and sits on top here. Um, you also have this little piece which is interesting. It's a long screw that screws into a hole here and it's got a little set nut to lock it in place. 
that is basically an infinitely adjustable um, Z end stop. Very nice. So you loosen this set nut, adjust this to whatever height you want to get your perfect um, Z height, and then you lock the set nut to hold it in place. That's genius. I love that. Um, everything is already actually plugged in. I had to plug in two of these that pulled out. Um, nothing appears to be loose. Heat bed right here simply plugs in. It runs underneath into the printer here and plugs in like that. I do believe that will catch on this edge back here, so I'm going to have to pay attention to that. Boy, this is rough. It's just really, the bed just does not move smoothly. I mean, we'll see how well it prints, but I'm not impressed with the smoothness of any of these components. They just don't feel smooth. Okay, so I put the, as you saw, I put the carriage assembly in place. The coupler for the lead screw. Um, do remember there are two set screws, one on each side. Um, I set it so that I set it so that the two touched and then I raised it up a little bit so that the two lead screws aren't exactly touching inside of here and tightened it down. I made sure one of these screws was on the flat face of the stepper motor drive shaft and it should be good. So now we're going to put the little capture for the lead screw but remove the bearing. It's just going to mess up your prints. You don't need the bearing. So I installed the top bracket here that captures the Z-Rod, but I, of course, as I told you, remove the bearing, because that's only going to make this push against this, which you don't want, because you get Z-banding. Connector plate sandwiches these 3D printed plate to this, and you have a handle on top here, so you can actually pick the printer up. That's pretty cool. And your spool holder actually attaches right there. You take those two screws out and you put your spool holder in there, so it's an all-in-one. Pretty cool. So we're going to have fun with this. Alright, spool holder is installed on the back of the printer, end stop is installed and adjusted. It's basically a really long screw that screws into the bed of the printer here, and then you have this nut on top here that you can spin by hand, so you can adjust the screw up and down to get your bed level, and then you lock it in place by turning that nut to lock it, and you are good. I do like the way they have this set up, although that looks like it could be pulled out, so I would prefer... If they, oh, there is a hole here. Oh, there is a hole there. We're gonna use that hole. Because I was just thinking, a little hole here to put a zip tie through would be really handy. Because then I could grab this and hang on to it so that it doesn't pull free and yank these connections. There, now this can't pull these connections out. Now they're secure. That's a good idea, I'm glad they did that. I was worried about how close that was, but it does work, the spool does not interfere with this. So you'd feed directly into here, then lift up. So that works, not bad. And this is a beveled connection here. So you shouldn't have to worry about the filament being cut or snipped by this as it goes higher. Plus, it's only going this high. So it should be okay. Well, I replaced the bent screw because I could not tighten the bed enough to um, put it on there. So I had to replace the screw. It got bent in shipping. Replaced the screw, put the bed back on, and leveled it on the first shot. I almost nailed it eyeballing it. I had to adjust three of these just a little bit. Um, I was a little too close because I, I did it with the aluminum bed before I put the sticker on, so I was a little too close. Uh, it's printing now, and it looks fine. I won't be able to tell you the quality of the print until it's done, so stay tuned. Alrighty, I am done printing for tonight. The X2 is an interesting printer. Um... I can't say I suggest buying it. I think there are better printers available for a better price. The Ender 3 is cheaper than this and has a bigger build volume and works very well. This does, however, it works very well. It's got some issues. I see noise in the prints and I'm starting to think that noise might actually be salmon skin because it forms concentric circles. 
So I'm going to try to throw some TL smoothers in here and see what happens, see what it does. But here are the prints that I've made. This is the Marvin. I hope this comes out well enough for you to see. As you can see, it's it's mechanically a very clean print. It's just noisy. Oop. The, the, the little bracket, the little key ring is strong. I'm trying to break it. I actually put an indent in my finger. And it did not break. Then I printed a screwdriver. Now, the little extrusions issues you're seeing there, those were actually the hot end failing. The nozzle and heat brake weren't tight enough. And so filament was leaking out of both the top and the bottom. And that filament would leak as a blob onto the print. And that's what caused those little extrusion issues. Um, this is repairable, of course. I just got to clean it up, heat it up, take it apart, re-put it together again, you know, with the correct closure. Make sure they're actually, you know, butted up against each other. But for now, I just stuck a different hot end on it so I don't have to worry about it. Same thing, just, you know, a different one. And I'll fix this later and keep this as a spare. And, um, and then, of course, here is the Benchy. You can still see the salmon skin is an issue there, right there. See that? Right. Besides the skin noise, it's a very clean print. First layer was absolutely perfect. Whatever this bed surface stuff is they have here, it actually works pretty good. It's, it's a really good stick, and the parts pop right off when you give them a tug. Um, I'm, I'm impressed with whatever it is they're using. It's a little different than the other guys. Um, and the bridging is absolutely perfect. Not one single strand of filament out of place in any of those bridges, including a perfectly flat internal top bridge there. The stack is good. The front and bow is good. The back is good. It did a good job. Mechanically, the printer did a very, very good job. Um, I just got to figure out how to get rid of the noise. If I can get rid of the noise, this is a very usable printer. Um, I still don't suggest people buy it unless you want this for some reason. If you do, great. I would consider it a reasonably safe buy for a DIYer. Um, it's not going to be garbage. It's not going to just, you know, not work. It appears to be functionally good, but the Ender 3 is better and it's cheaper. So if you're deciding on a printer this size, get the Ender 3. If you got your heart set on this for some reason, it's not a bad printer. I even picked it up by the handle while it was printing, and it was fine. It's not bad, although I do hate the fact that Tronxy reverses the direction on this wheel. I really hate that. I hate having to go left to go down the menus. It's annoying. But um, that's it. You guys have a great night. I will be giving you updated videos on this printer because I like it enough to want to make more videos about it as I try to correct and fix things, improve things, make it better, and we shall see. You guys have a great night.